Big red button. Big red button is pushed. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 199 of Masters of the Forge. My name is Adam Fasolt. And with me is Jason something. Hi, Jason. Uh, How are you? I'm this fine. Podcast- oh, sorry. Uh, I overtalked you a little bit there. That's okay. We'll get it in post. This is the Masters of the Forge podcast, and our mission is to bring the world of Warhammer 40,000 to life on your tabletop. <laughs> okay. Your levels are all messed up, man. <laughs> oh, are they? Are they? Oh, yes, are they are. Messed up? Is it yeah, let's bring is it down it, a little bit. Yeah, is, Bring it down? Bring it down now. Bring it on yeah, down. Yeah, just a touch. Bring just a touch. Down. Bring it on down. Bring it on down. Down. down, down, down. There we go. So, Jason, right. how are you doing? How are you? How is your day going? Uh, well, um, you just witnessed my email exchange, so <laughs> I'm not on fire. Yeah. I'm not covered in raw sewage. Um, <laughs> Someone else is. Yeah, someone else's. It's not me. I'm going to I'm gonna have to go with like a hose, though, and clean it down. But okay, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. Uh, what a beautiful I'm not dead day yet. There we go. Yeah. So uh, the, the Christmas season is upon us. Yeah. And we held off on recording this episode for the end of thing, uh, the end of um, November. Yeah, because we wanted to only have one episode in December, mm-hmm. and we wanted the last episode of the season to be episode two hundred. Mm-hmm. But there have been some vagaries of the warp happening with Games uh, Workshop, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a funny. This email. episode is a lot shorter than we were expecting it to be, and uh, uh, first. First, the episode was shortened by the fact that um, we can't cover content, and then it was shortened for other reasons, and we'll discuss those other oh. reasons in a later segment. <laughs> All right, let's start with the bulk of this episode, which is going to be hobby progress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man, this, is almost the cur- this is almost a cursed episode. Oh, almost. nice. So yeah. um, I did wrap up my armies on parade. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then after that, I <laughs> looked good too. Oh uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with yeah. it. Uh, it's pretty great. Uh, it's first place in my heart. So yeah. uh, then after that, uh, you know, I, I I did leave it at the store uh, to be displayed for the week uh, instead of taking it with me to mini war gaming, which was fine. I think you know none of the other guys brought 40k, so I think it was good that I brought a 40 K army instead. I brought my orcs to that. And we'll talk about those games later. Um, I did paint it. Did I talk about painting the golf rocker? I, I made sure to put the golf rocker in my list and the heckin heckin ton of land fortress uh, as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I then moved on to, I did sign up for a war band painting trade on, on the, nice. uh, on the IC's discord. Yeah. And we we everybody who involved was involved in that painted up a warband. Uh, I did two, but to be perfectly honest, Warcry doing two warbands is basically like doing one warband of something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I couldn't f- the my my gift E really wanted Stormcast, and right now in this season of Warcry, there really isn't just a standalone Stormcast. Warband, there's one that yeah. comes in the starter. So I said, hey, and he said he doesn't really play Warcry. He just really likes the models. And I was like, well, what if I did this? What if I bought the starter mm-hmm. and I painted up both Warbands and just sent the starter? 
And then okay. if him and his buddies want to play, want to try out Warcry, they can. Or they'll just have models, which is also fine. Warcry's fun. I've yeah, I've, I've played, played it a few times. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah, quick. It's, it's easy. It, yeah, it's it's in and it's it's nuanced. There's lots of part in moving parts to it. The fact that it's also a deck building game at the same time. Yeah, it's fun. And I'm glad GW a while back sent us a starter, and they they were sending us like boost like the the war bands for a little while, but then they stopped doing that. Yeah, but I I really liked I really liked it. It's it's good. Um, so. Armies on Parade, Warcry Warbrands. I also uh, painted four uh, battle mechs in lieu oh, yeah. of uh, playing <laughs> uh, BattleTech at uh, at Mini Wargaming with the guys. Yeah. Uh, and so I've only got one slot left on my advent calendar. Okay. And it's a war Lord of War slot. And I was like, uh, what do I do? I don't know. I asked around if anybody wanted to paint a, or sorry, print a, uh, Gargant for me. Oh. And, and that's a tough ask. Cause that's a big model to print. Yeah. And I bet even getting somebody to print it would be like 200 bucks. The, the old armor cast style. Oh yeah. 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 So I don't think there's any way I would get that before the end of the year. Nope. And Tucker mentioned i've been resisting it for a long time i'm like i'm not gonna <laughs> buy a bunch of armagers just so i can play uh age of darkness i'm not gonna buy well, a bunch of armagers paint they're them. both in knight's codex and in the age of darkness yeah yeah but i don't need them in 40k i need them in order to play age of darkness you can't okay. you you have to bring at least you have to like one for one you have to bring armagers with Oh, is that the rules? Yeah, I, I don't know the rules on those. To yeah, be honest. that's the rule on it. So Tucker's like, "Hey, guess what? Guess what's a Lord of War slot?" And I'm like, "You jerk! <laughs> You're right. Gosh darn it!" So yeah, I bet he was so happy too. <laughs> I bet he was. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he got a little smile out of that one. Uh, so I'll probably end up doing that as my last project for the year to wrap up the advent calendar. In the meantime, I've been building breachers for the Imperial Navy. Uh, so, well, not just breachers, the, the like piece of parts for my rogue trader army. I have a bunch of infantry mm-hmm. this week. I've been kind of planning, looking at what I have, trying to build lists, sort of starting lists with the new codex, uh, the new Astro Militarum codex. Uh, I finished up a couple extra Gene Steeler cult bodied troops. Uh, I pa- I built five squats from mm-hmm. the Necromunda squat box. Yeah, uh, they'll work just fine as counts as I think. I might write what the special weapons are on the bases of these models. Just yeah, just for people's you know if I go to an event. Otherwise, screw it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I built all the breachers from the Into the Dark set. These are great models. They look really nice. I wish, like, I just wish I had all breachers at this point. Unfortunately, the special weapon really only fits. You can only put one special weapon in there. Uh, but I, you know, I finagled it. I managed to get, I have a bunch of other arms and junk. I kit bashed a few. Swapping heads like the, uh, the breachers come with tons of extra heads, mm-hmm. really well designed bear heads, and also the helmets. More helmets than you need for the squad too. So I w- I've been mix matching those heads with Astra Militarum heads and the uh, Admech heads I have left over, and okay. they all look really good. They look really good. I'm really happy with them. Uh, so I managed to get. Two, like I, I made the command squad out of those guys, mm-hmm. and one of them is like uh, a sh- has a shield, like a like a breacher shield. I'm gonna use that as my stamp company standard, right? So I'm gonna paint that all up, and he's gonna count as a company standard because that's how you get a company standard in Zone Mortalis. You don't have a giant flag. Instead, you have a guy with a shield with that's all painted up. Right. 
So I think I think people will, will understand that. I think that'll be good. And I just swapped out his Reacher, like shotgun or whatever, for uh, a Laz gun. Uh, so right now, ready to go. I have three rogue traders, the rogue trader tech priest, the navigator, uh, the voidsman squad that came with that set, mm-hmm. four units of scions, and the command squad. Okay. Uh, I was going to keep the Cadia Stands infantry, mm-hmm. but it really does not fit the aesthetic for the naval crew. Yeah. It just doesn't it just doesn't work. So I mean I was already giving the artillery to Jared and I'm I'm going to keep the war or the uh scout sentinel because I think this army if when they are deployed on land they would have some sentinels. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh but I'm going to give the infantry to John. John's yeah turned around and gave me like four times as much money worth of stuff. He's going to give me some scions to round out my squads Mm -hmm. and also some, uh, I think one or two of the uh, Torox and uh, one one or two Valkyries. So that'll be nice. Yeah. Thank you, John. And uh, uh, that's, that's great. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's enough for <laughs> now. Oh, I did. I did. Uh, uh, Quinn has been watching Herbie the Love Bug. I just put it on one day. Just yeah. like, well, you like cars here. And, oh, man. Like the yeah. old, like the old stuff. Like yeah. the ones from the 70s. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he like he likes Herbie rides again. And Herbie goes to uh, that city in France. Uh whatever it's called anyways. Yeah. It's like the French grand prix and he oh, loves okay. it. He doesn't, he doesn't let me put on the original Herbie, the love bug or, and I'm really annoyed that he doesn't want to watch Herbie goes bananas. Cause it has a little kid in it who calls him Ocho, which is all, it's my favorite one, but he doesn't want to watch. <laughs> he doesn't want to watch Ocho. He wants to watch Don Knotts and, uh, I forgot who, who's in the other one, but yeah, doesn't matter. Don like, Knotts is in there. That's, he's pretty great. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. And these movies are actually fairly progressive, at least when it comes to like um, gender and stuff. It's pretty yeah. great. Uh, and also a little blue car. Anyways, long story <laughs> short, he has a little white car with blue stripes, a little white Volkswagen with blue stripes. Yeah. And I had to repaint that for him so that it had a white, uh, blue stripe and a red stripe. Nice. And it had a 53 on the side. So Nice. He's very excited. Oh, I, I still have to paint a 53 on the hood, but it's, I think here's the thing. We're not, we're not really looking for uh, any uh, authenticity here. He's just nah. really, he's pretty stoked about it. Yeah. Mainly because mom goes, Hey, I bet daddy will paint a 53 on the side for you. And he, and this tonight it's like six forty five at night. And he's like, <laughs> I want to paint it. Daddy paint, daddy paint. I'm like, wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just threw you under the bus. Okay, so Jason, uh-huh. have you done any Herber Burgers? Yeah, I've got some. Um, Jason, so, yeah, would you like to do your hobby progress now? Sure, Jason, we need would to do you- everything. Oh, I didn't mean to overtalk <laughs> you again. Please keep going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am amused by this joke. I'm, I am I suspect that you're not as amused by it, but that's fine. Keep going. I don't know. I work in academia. You could figure that one out. <laughs> Jason's like, I don't think this is a joke. I think he's actually. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a while back, I bought uh, those made to order horrors because I did. You know, they're metal. Yeah, Why not? Because they're adorable. Well, yeah, they are. And um, do they come so metal finally, or resin? Uh, they're oh, they're metal. Oh, they're they're metal. They're um, they're reminding me why I sometimes don't like painting metal models. It reminds me every time, or building them. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, but the first group, because I bought two groups of five, are assembled and primed. They just need a second prime because, of course, they do. Um, gluing their arms has been a real challenge. Um, yeah, we'll see. I have this bad feeling I'm going to end up with a bunch of armless horrors, but okay. 
Oh, and I also have to make sure that I pronounce the word or enunciate the word horror correctly because <laughs> some of our friends said that I wasn't pronouncing the double R properly. Oh. So horrors. There we go. <laughs> uh, <that> was- <laughs> Kind of uh, like, kind of yeah. like, kind of like, um, Steve at Mini Wargaming. I told him I'm probably going to bring my diggers, and he's like, "I'm not saying that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve is Steve knows Steve knows knows what's up. Oh, uh, they've already posted your at least one of your videos. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, all three have been posted now. Okay, and I saw that they posted one of Kendrick's, but I don't know that. That was just, you know, what I saw real quick. Right, yeah. They were fun games. Were oh, fun yeah, games. I'm sure. Um, you know, I like I and I like watching all those guys and their, their gaming. Yeah. You know, it's, it's always a. Uh, yeah, it's very much our speed. Yeah. I mean, some, they, I mean, they do, they do do match play stuff, but it's never, it's. It's the kind of entertainment that I want. I know mm. it's not everybody's cup of tea, and that's super fine. But yeah. uh, I've heard people denigrate the way they do things, and it's like, you know what? I like there's, what they do. There's there's content for you out there. Yeah. Get wrecked. Yeah. I, I most specifically absolutely adore their narrative campaigns. Oh, um, so good. Yeah, some of those I've watched multiple, multiple times. Yeah. All right. So back to my hobby progress, uh, thousand mm-hmm. suns. So I built a new set of uh, our new squad of rubrics. Um, so yeah, that's the first part of, I hate myself. The second <laughs> part of, I hate myself is I'm going to paint them in a marbled white scheme that I've kind of come up with. Um, oh, so yeah. So now that you're, now that you're a homeowner, you, <laughs> you're just, you're, you, you've decided, Oh, I can't, actually end it all because a bank <laughs> is depending on my income to keep them alive. So uh-huh. I have to stay alive. So I'll do the next best thing. <laughs> have you been listening to my inner monologue again? <laughs> That's a terrifying thing. Um, it's an easy marbling. Um, I accidentally stumbled across it. I mean, completely accidental um, when I was airbrushing something else. So I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, let's see. I'm, I've decided to go through and like, what is it for? Um, the lost the nails, um, discord. It's what delusional December. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Delusional deadline, delusional deadline, December. There we go. So I've been working on these three hold automatons. On, on. Science. <laughs> So I've been working on these three uh, automaton uh, castelics for the Thousand Suns. At the same time that I'm working on two Contemptor Dreads for the Thousand Suns, and also on Attack Squad and a few uh, independent on. characters. Science! <laughs> she she blinded me with science. Achoo. Yeah, Jesus, achoo. Jesus is so loud. Anyways, as you were saying. <laughs> so I've got all these models that all have a lot of detail and there's a lot of them and I'm just being delusional and doing them all at once. Mm. Um, That's what I do. Yeah. Well, I'm successful all the time. So clearly that must be the right way to go for people with normal mental health. Well then, Hmm. We'll see. Um, You you had me until normal mental health and then you just (laughs) kind of lost me. (laughs) Wow, you heard that one, didn't you? <laughs> no, I was laughing. Oh, good. Science! Oh, shut up. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, no, yeah. your sneezes are now part of the show. Yeah. Multiple sneezes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry, Jason. There we go. Um, right. Yeah, so I've got like the automaton I need to, I've been working on, the, and so I'm just. Like normally, like one of these units, I'd probably knock out really quickly. But because I'm doing all five of these big things at once, it's mm-hmm. kind of slowing me down. Um, I do need to work on the tax squad, though, because it's probably the farthest behind. And the other night, Mike and I were watching some absolutely horrible anime. 
Oh that we're not goodness. going to name. FYI, sometimes there's boobies in the in the in the Discord. You yeah. know, what? maybe I need to put. Maybe I need to make a different channel for anime. I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> so, so we have. Let's see. We have. Um, or maybe put like an adult anime. No, mystery, wait, no, because science. it's not. It's not yeah, adult woman. anime. <laughs> Anyways, so anyway, new, yeah. no, hold on. New, I, I'm going to make a new channel here. Right now we have Hangouts, Game Streaming, and Mystery Science Theater, which is our... My God. Are you okay? okay. I'm not editing this. This one, this <laughs> one is Anime You Probably Can't... <laughs> unsee I'm yeah gonna make it a ch- i'm gonna make it a voice channel and we'll create it and then we'll make it <laughs> and then we'll we'll make it uh a adult there we go yeah there we go all set so while we're watching the anime that shall not be named i was working on uh the more t- and actually almost finished it like there's a little more detail uh left uh, for those of you who aren't playing Age of Darkness, the Moritat's basically a two-pistol gunslinger uh, model, uh, HQ choice, um, kind of a weird HQ in that you can't take it as a warlord. It is a, you know, basically it's a character killer. That's that's entire its entire thing. Mm-hmm. And I had built this back in seventh edition when I had bounced over to horse heresy stuff and it's gone through like two other paint jobs. And now that I've gotten my thousand suns painted where I want to, I went ahead and stripped it and repainted it. Um, and so I guess I'm going to take that to Adepticon. Oh, that's next. All right. So Adepticon. So hobby progress towards Adepticon. Um, basically I think the rest of my Adepticon, everything or the rest of my hobby progress until we do Adepticon it's going to be geared specifically for Adepticon. Um, so I'm putting together some lists and prioritizing gameplay. Um, I built a friendly list for the, the what is it, the friendly, which is 1750 with the flyer. Uh, I think everything's done on it. It's a combo of Thousand Suns with a small Zinch detachment, which, I, which needs to be, if I remember correctly, 25% or less. So I think that's oh, all yeah, complete. Yeah, that's right. There's like math involved. Yeah, math sucks. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I have that one taken care of. Um, and that's for the friendly. And if I do Zone Mortalis for the Horse Heresy, which I would like to do, and they've done it every year um, that we've had, you know, Adepticon for the last few years. Uh, so I'm going to do is create two lists for there. One, a Raven Guard list. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I have... Man, I have a lot of Raven Guard that are fully painted, and they've only hit the table maybe two or three times. So Yeah, yeah and you've had them for years. Yeah, I've had them since 2018, 2019. Right. Um, I could probably run a 4,000-point Zone Mortalis list with them. Wow. And not double anything, because I have so many of them. So, Jeez, beasties. Yeah, it's a little embarrassing. Um, And what's funny is I kind of forget... <laughs> It's not that I forgot that I had them. I just wasn't really thinking about it. And the Age of Darkness did an episode on Raven Guard, and I was listening to it and thinking, I've got Raven Guard. I've got a bunch of Raven Guard. So I'll take a Raven Guard list. They're all painted. I'm not worried. Right now, I'm just working on a Thousand Suns list and uh, figuring out what I'm taking for it and making sure I get that all painted, which I think it might all be painted now, to be honest. Really? Depending on what list. Oh, except for the tax squad. The tax squad's not finished. Oh. So anyway, that's that's my hobby progress is building lists and painting thousand suns and blah 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 blah. Shh. Dude, I'm shocked at how much you got done considering how busy and messed up it's been for you. So oh, freaking if, kudos. If you can do it, anybody can do it. I will be honest, the the Wednesday night bad movie marathon and you know, our get togethers are probably the only thing that's keeping me one hobbying and two non homicidal. I am unindicted. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's, uh, let's hop over to games played. What you got? 
I have Jesus. You played with Scary? Yeah. So. Oh right, yeah, he's so, working there now, isn't he? Yeah, he works there a couple days a week. Yeah. I played. Okay, so I brought my orcs and I brought my diggers. Mm-hmm. Looking at my models, like, first of all, man, these games. So the first, the first game I played, I brought my orcs and I, I played like a my Death Dread list against Scary, and we had a mm-hmm. super awesome time. You can see that in the vault. Okay. If you're a vault member, you can see that yes, one. I am. And that that's a really good one because um, he tries out the new guard and he doesn't mm-hmm. use the standard um, regimental doctrines. He uses the one where you can move and disembark, which is really interesting. Well, he's he's a uh, Drukari player, so yeah. that's going to work. His that's yeah. better for his style. Yeah, precisely, dude. Precisely. Yeah. So that worked out that's well. A, for him. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and that was a good close game, and there were a lot of really fun moments in that yeah. game that happened, and uh, it 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 was just it was just really good from top to bottom. But after that, I was like, man, it, uh, Dave and I played a game with the with the diggers versus some demons that he he brought and we just stopped after turn one because it took so long for me to figure out what was going on with the army i'm like i went to i went to steve and i was like dude i don't think i should play astro Militarum. i don't know what i'm doing yeah. i don't know what's going on and not only that on top of that it'll be a bunch of proxy basically proxy models yeah. you know and also the fact that I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like some of these models look a little racist. I don't think I want to use them anymore. The, like, oh, the and they're it, all together. So I have them all painted together, right? And every, like, it's a kaleidoscope of skin tones. Yeah. But if you look at just one of the dark skin models by themselves, it it does not look great. Okay. It looks like, yeah, it's, I think I'm going to, I'm going to shelve these guys. Um, they're fun and cute, but I, I don't know. They're just weird. And they're so small. They're so small. And oh, because they're that old scale, old scale. And they don't have, they only have pistols and you can't just take them like any guardsman with a pistol. So yeah. I'm just going to shelve these. And if I do build up the diggers again, I, yeah. I, I mean, the vehicles and stuff are fine. And, and a lot of the infantry is fine, but I'm going to go to the, go towards buying a couple few boxes of those ash waste nomads from oh, Necromunda. Yeah. yeah. I've already got the one squad that uses those models and it's quite frankly, perfect for yeah. the diggers. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe work on that in a future project. Uh, not anytime soon if that, but yeah, I think that's the way to go. Uh, then yeah. I played a game. So I played a game of Necrons, uh, with uh, sorry, my orcs versus Necrons. At that point, I was like, "Well, good thing I brought a few extra orc models. I need to mix up my list a little bit." Mm-hmm. Uh, played played Necrons with Steve. We got to like turn three, and I'm like, "Hey, Steve, guess what?" He's like, "What?" I'm like, "We didn't draw any cards yet," and he's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> Because we were playing, <laughs> we were playing uh, the new Maelstrom. I forget what it's called, oh, but like, no. yeah, we had we were just playing with the base mission. Uh, yeah. was, but that was really funny, and that was also a close and close game. It was real fun. We had a, you can tell how much fun we're having. Oh yeah, I, I yeah. I'm sure. Um, I know that there was one guy who came in a couple of well, it must have been about a month ago with Thousand Sons, and did like four or five games with them, and basically had the same basic mm. list with and without Magnus. Right. Um, which was actually really cool because I got to see just how everything interacted. Um, mm-hmm. It also reminds me that I have quite a few vehicles that I never remember to take anywhere because mm. I always take infantry. So, yeah. 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 Uh, so I think, and then I played orcs versus space Marines with Steve again. Also awesome. played his dark angels. Okay. Uh, that was, I mean, I still had, I still had fun, but it wasn't the game itself wasn't as fun because, uh, armor of contempt just shuts down everything I did. Oh yeah. It's yeah. just terrible. But yeah, other than that, playing against Steve was again, really fun and, and I really enjoyed it. And that day we got a look at, um, Dave's new miniature line that he's promoting. Oh yeah. 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 Ravage stars. 
Ravage Stars, and he yeah. gave me he gave me a model for it. So I'm gonna paint up that model probably for around Christmas time, oh, just cool. to get it painted and have a look yeah. at it. It's really cool. It's like a it's like a Chaos Space Marine, but like big scale, and there's both men and women in the in there, so it looks really awesome. It's pretty that cool. is cool. That's actually really I'll cool. Uh, then I played a game yesterday. It was really nice to get out and get a game in up at the game store. Oh, Flipside yeah. Flipside opened up a new location. I think I briefly mentioned this before, but Flipside has two locations, one in Clifton Park, which is near me, and one in East Greenbush, which is where I was playing at for the longest time, but is yeah. super far. It was fine when I didn't have a kid. I could take a day and go up there and whatever, but it's so hard to just yeah. – to get Take over there. a whole day like that and go out there and be back at like midnight. Yeah. I just can't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it's re- it was nice to get up there and I played a game versus, oh my God, what's his name? I only know his screen name, White Iverson. Thanks, White Iverson. Sorry. Anyways, we had a fun <laughs> game. He, it's the first game he'd played since Pandemic. He oh. Played his, his Death yeah. Guard versus, uh, I did bring the Astro Militarum this time just to uh because i had all the box was in the car and i yeah. literally didn't have time to put anything else together so i was like ah okay so i'll try this out um just so i can talk i wanted to try out some of the rules that i've been using for um the uh, uh rogue traders which is what my focus is right now yeah so we did we played a game and he he uh it was, I was holding the entire, basically the, almost the entire board and it just took him so long to creep forward. And that's what he said. He, he, he saw me spread out and just take everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the set, scout sentinels were great for getting those forward positions on the sides and, and uh, uh, the move, move, move order lets you just run automatically six inches extra. Mm-hmm. And so you can really cover a lot of ground yeah, with cross. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can cover a lot of ground with these guys. So, um, but in the end he still won out just for, due to like one good charge at the end, he was able to swing it his way. Yeah. So good job. Good job, dude. Uh, that was, a, that was a really fun game and it was nice to play in the store. And I was in the store for a couple hours playing yeah. when uh, Mike says, Hey, would you be interested in running a, a tournament for us? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I could run the tournament. I can't do your logistics. Someone's yeah. going to have to, someone will have to, I will run it the day of, I will put a day and a half of work in. Yeah. But I can't do your logistics. Someone is going to have to deal with social media, getting yeah. the train, all that stuff. Yeah. That's a lot of work. It is. As a ton of work. It is. So anyways, good, good, good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lots of games. Lots no games, of games for me. No games for you, but... Just this, but... The, the um, light is at the end of the tunnel, right? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday, which is in nice. two days. Um, Sweet. My last recording for school was supposed to be yesterday, but as you heard me replying to that email messages earlier, I will be recording one more time before Christmas, um, which is fine. It's fine. We're all fine. How are you? Um, <laughs> but we are going to play. Um, ah, what's it called? Adeptus Titanicus. That is happening before the yeah. end of the month. Well, here, that's just it. That's what I wanted to say. I think nor- a lot of the time, normally we'll we'll get together and play a 40K game and record. Yeah. I think since the sh- show requires no show notes whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> Right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> right? We should play a game of Titanicus. Yeah. And then we can. Re- I just said the S word. I'm not editing. It's that time of the semester. Sorry. Okay. Put an explicit tag. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. It's fine. Uh, so, um, what was it? Oh, yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. We'll play a game and then we'll record that. Maybe we'll take a day. Maybe I'll take a day. I know or that we'll you just want me to play Titanicus so that I can get addicted to it and then build and paint a Titanicus army before Adepticon. Yeah. I, I know Duh. you. Duh. I know you. And I, you will I've... too, because it's an amazing game. Quiet. Quiet you. Quiet. 
I am going to get together with John. (laughs) (laughs) I'm probably going to get together with John on Wednesday. He's going to come down. I really appreciate that John comes down and and, uh, he plays with me here because it's way easier to get games in. Yeah. Um, Especially since I already went up to Flipside on Saturday or Sunday. Mm Mm-hmm. Sunday, uh, yeah. Oh man, it smells in here for some reason. Anyways, uh Hey, are let's we going go somewhere? Beyond the fringe. Nice. So, uh Andor was awesome. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. I really like that. Good story. Yeah. Every time I went online, someone like some video or some like advertisement for some stupid online magazine that nobody reads was saying Oh, lo- and or lowest ratings for any Star Wars show. I'm like, how? I like, I dug it. Even it, though people, even though people are might be a little tired of Star Wars, and I heard some, I saw a few people say, well, people are have been so burned by all the bad Star Wars. I'm like, well, first of all, what? Second of all, yeah, the word of mouth on this has to be so good that I don't know how it's not getting good ratings. I think it's just here's the issue I had with it. You could did not the entire thing didn't drop at once. I think that this is a show that you actually have to binge. Oh, uh, because yeah, maybe. it really does feel like three movies. Oh, uh, because it's about three movies in length. And I think if you like, if you watch three the first three episodes and the next three and the next three, then I think that the continuity works better. Because that's oh, how I watched you, it. Yeah. And, and you know what? Yeah. I think you're right. I think I think if it had been three feature length mm-hmm. pieces instead of episodes, I think it probably would have been more digestible for some folks. Um, or at least it works that way narratively, which, yeah. yeah, I could definitely I'll I'll give you that. I like episodic releases like this. Yeah, it means I don't have to like when The Crown came out a couple weeks ago. Oh my God. I just watched and watched and watched and I didn't get any sleep Yeah. for people with impulse control. I suppose <laughs> the all at once thing is fine. I do not <laughs> possess impulse control. So I appreciate when episodes are released weekly, but in this case, I think I definitely see your point. That's cool. I'm going to say that, um, the more I see of Andy circus as a, I think that's how you pronounce his last name uh-huh. as a human. Yeah. Not as a live action capture. Yeah. The more I, I appreciate him. Like I thought right. he was incredible in the Avengers movies. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do like it whenever he drops into Gollum just because mm-hmm. who wouldn't, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I do you like do the thing, do the thing. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then he jumps I- up in the chair and yeah. Uh, it's like when Mr. Bean is in a is in a movie and he starts talking. You're like, oh yeah, that's right. He's a people. <laughs> I forgot he's a people. Yeah, uh, but I, I I really enjoyed. I did enjoy Andor. Um, it was a little bit slow at first, but when I started watching it in blocks, I was like, oh, this makes this this feels so much right much better for me at least. Right. So. I am. I have always been a person who eats up the scenery like like i eat up the uh uh exposition yeah so for example i i may have made this comparison before but ann rice has two main series one is the vampire series and one is the mayfair witch series they're in the same universe Mm -hmm. but they are separate stories and I'm super into I was super into the Mayfair Witch series, even though the first novel was basically 700 pages of genealogy. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was so dry. But uh, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. OK, oh a bunch man, of genealogy that... and then butt stuff. But that's also fine. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I don't know. the 700 pages of genealogy just. And don't much, forget the butt yeah. stuff. There was butt stuff. Yeah, there might be, but you still get all the, you know, okay, fine. You have 695 pages of genealogy and five pages of non-genealogy. Oh, I don't you, know are un- you are, you are underestimating Anne Rice's ability to, to have queer sex uh, bulk in her books. There is plenty oh, okay. to, to be had. Thank you. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> it was, and it's on that. Good. It's so good. <laughs> I love Mayfair Witch series. You should, you should read it. Um, What else? Oh, uh, 
online letters of reference. That's yeah. mine beyond the fringe. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm writing reference and letters for students and other faculty members and stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, we were supposed to record one night and I found out, no, this one letter has to be in in three hours. And I was like, ah. uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I have a job you. interview. <laughs> I was messaging you going, hey, man, I, I emergency. This one's an emergency. And so well, I, no, you messaged me saying yeah. you were writing letters of reference. I'm like, wait, you don't mean like, are you quitting your job or are you writing it for a student? <laughs> no, I, I was writing me straight. For, yeah, I was. <laughs> oh, man, if it wasn't for those online being able to submit online. Oh, boy, that, that would have mm-hmm. been. Mm-hmm. That'd have been bad news. Um, yep. So yeah, online communication not as bad as we sometimes think it is. Good. Yeah. All Good. right. Well, I think uh, the the it's time for your for our news the the yeah. astropathic communique. Yeah. Uh, so the thing that I was most excited about this past well besides the U.S. Open, which I'm going next year. Uh, okay. I haven't discussed it with Wendy at all, but that's oh, fine. Okay. Uh, I really want to go. Uh, <laughs> besides that, uh, the Battle Forces, yeah. um, the new Gloom Spites gets Battle Force is. That's a lot of squigs. It's quite possibly going to derail my a Rogue Trader army because <laughs> it's a Loon Boss on Cave Squig, two Mangler Squigs, one yeah. of which can be a Loon Boss, 10 Squig Hoppers, and 10 Squigs um, with what they describe as two long suffering Squig Herders. 24 you models. Get, and you get, if you buy two boxes of those, man, you, you are set. One, two. You get yourself a giant Cave 12. Squig. Yeah. 24 models per mm-hmm. battle force of so 48 models. Ah, you can do that in a month. Yeah. Well, especially since they're squigs, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Spray them red. Paint the. Yeah. yeah paint the bases. Oh yeah. my God. You're right. I could paint. I could paint two boxes of these in a month. No problem. <laughs> God damn it, Jason. Oh, look, I swore again. <laughs> I'm not editing this one. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> All right. So uh, this will be future so, revenge for putting oh, yeah. me through Adeptus Titanicus. Okay. Uh, yeah. Next is Jason. What did you have for your astropathic communique? I'm ama- I'm I'm so happy. I didn't totally freak out on this. They finally are releasing the Thousand Suns helmets for the Mark VI armor. I'm totally stoked because I want those Mark VI helmets. But the best part now. Just so y'all know, I never, all my Marines have helmets, period, the end. Why? Because I do so much zone mortalis stuff. That and Plus, then we don't have any of the whatever issues. However, the head without the helmet does look like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And there's <laughs> part of me that wants to have one sergeant that is the Rock. Just because. Um, Fair. Yeah. Fair. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what his name was and what character name he had in G.I. Joe the movie was. So especially since we made you watch that. Um Oh God. What was what what did we call that? Uh, uh Poetry in just, Motion. No, it wasn't Poetry in Motion. Poetry in Motion? <laughs> that amazing uh I'm sure it was Oscar nominated or nominated award nominated uh movie. Oscar considered. <laughs> Oscar considered. As then they considered throwing it right in the trash. Oscar adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> G.I. Joe movie. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, oh, see, we part, said we were going to write down the list of movies that we watched between move between. But I, I never did that. No. Uh, now for uh, for the um, uh, for the we we sat down. I sat down with. I, I'm a Patreon for. Uh, the uh, Skiffy and Fanti show. Oh yeah, yeah. And there is a the last Frosty movie uh, by um, the uh, uh, the people that that did all the other Frosty movies. Uh huh. Um, it, it's a star-studded cast, dude. Star-studded cast. 
I, I love uh, that we're using that phrase to describe this. Okay. Yeah, well, it is. It stars the the amazing <laughs> Mickey Rooney. Oh, okay. Eth- Ethel Merman. Red okay. Buttons. Uh-huh. Shelly Winters. Yeah. What is this, 1980? 82? Uh, it is 19... 19- See, I, I made the mistake of clicking the Target ad. I can't believe they're selling this trash on Target. I mean, this <laughs> wonderful movie at Target. Uh, let's just say it's not Rankin and Bass. It's Rankin and Ass is is what this, this movie is. Yeah, I'm I just believe telling that. You. I read Ethel from Mickey Rooney, Alan Suisse, Jackie, Shelley Winters, Paul Freeze, Billy Mae Richards. Okay, we don't know any of those people. This is this sounds like it was done in like maybe at the very latest 1982. It's the last one. It's 1979. So, th- so I'm actually old. Okay. I'm actually technically older than this movie. Okay. Uh but it it is a bad movie. Oh, I believe but it, it. But it it's basically the Silmarillion of the Rankin and Bass uh <laughs> Rudolph movies. <laughs> It gives you the entire like <laughs> backstory. It's like a prequel for is a prequel for it shows you it tells you everything that happened up to uh the road off the red nosed reindeer and it and it and then it continues the story afterwards. Uh it is lit- <laughs> it is basically the Silmarillion. Cause it, and it briefly mentions the other movies in the middle. And it has the only thing it doesn't have is Oh wait, no, the Silmarillion also has a bunch of bad music in it. So yes, this is this is this this <laughs> that it is basically the same. Okay. Basically. But it also, just like the Silmarillion, <laughs> has a really awesome villain. Okay. The villain's name. Oh, where is it? Where is it here? Hold on. This should have been this actually really should have been my uh Beyond the Fringe, but it's okay. We don't have any actually star uh, Warhammer content anyways. Because <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, shipping lanes. Yeah. Um, thanks, supply chain. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, supply chain. Why do you Why do you do this to me? Oh, Winterbolt the wizard. Winterbolt. And he's got Winterbolt the the ice wizard. The, that no, sounds the like evil a dragon name. Wizard. Yeah, and the um the the Galadriel adjacent character is Lady Boreal, queen of the Northern Lights. Right. I wonder, if, I wonder if I saw this when I was a kid. Probably. But whatever. He's got ice dragons. Yeah. Those guys are cool. And yeah. then he rides later on, he rides a sleigh with snakes driving it. It's freaking no, I great. I didn't see that. I remember that. I just gave up. I just gave up a little bit of the movie, but I, I think just watching it, like you're going <laughs> to, you, you, you need to watch it to really experience and, and appreciate this film. And by film, I mean Rankin and Ast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I will take it under. Cons- if we can convince Nick to watch it, then yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Well, good, good. Well, I'm sure he may have already watched it. Uh, also, I found out that like a good seventy percent of the people in our Discord have had never seen Children of the Corn. When I last week, when I picked Children of the Corn two as the movie really? we should watch. Okay. Uh. Yeah, most of the people were like, "Yeah, we haven't. I haven't seen the first one." And Tucker and I were just upset at people. <sighs> Guess what? Tucker kept saying, "He goes, I'm just, I'm just upset. I'm, I am enraged." And I, I and I felt the same way. I can't, I can't believe so many people haven't seen Children of the Corn. It's Unreal. been a very long time since I've seen it. Unreal. I've seen it, but man, it's been forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so. We did play a game, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I, I, I was going to do a bit here where I said, all right, first we're going to have a section on, and then you're going to put a bunch of static in, but yeah. you're, you, you don't feel like editing, so that's fine. I'll do it. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, so... <laughs> No ads. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, well, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to have the story time uh, for the game that we played. Greetings, mofos. Are you out of George Dickel number eight staring at a broken chess machine? Well, don't want to spend the rest of the year tied to that couch. 
Well, why don't you head on over to the One Hour a Night Facebook page and see what exciting stuff is going on there. It's a place to post all your daily progress in the hobby grind, as well as receive and give positive feedback. Also, there are usually a few interesting challenges going on. That's right. Uh, all you have to do is search for One Hour a Night on Facebook. That's numeral one hour a night, all one word. Blood serum tests will be administered prior to approval. Sätt dig helvete och kom dere vekk. Det er ikke bikke. Det er en slags ting. Den imiterer jeg bikke, men det er ikke det. Kom dere vekk, idioter. What he said. Damn, I knew it was around here somewhere. Damn, where is it? Can I help you? Ah! Scared me! What do you see? I need the perfect scenario for a narrative game I'm running this week, and I can't find one! Sir, this is the Black Library. We don't have narrative scenarios. Well, then where should I go? Might I recommend the Tabletop Campaign Repo? The Tabletop Campaign Repo? What's that? The Tabletop Campaign Repo is an ad-free site for hosting resources related to playing tabletop miniatures working. Oh, like scenarios? Absolutely. Also, event packs, custom objectives, tracking sheets, custom terrain rules, maps, icon packs, award templates, and more. Oh, and this is for Warhammer 40k? Among other things, there's also Age of Sigmar, Kill Team, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and others. They're always open for content submissions for any system, even non-Games Workshop materials. Oh, that's awesome. It, it sounds like a great way to save all of this great content the community makes. A lot of that stuff often ends up disappearing into a dead message board or Facebook group. Exactly. It's a real community effort. Great. So uh, how do I get there? Just go to that webway gate marked tcrepo.com. Ah, uh, tcrepo.com. Got it. Uh, can I ask you one more question before I go? Fire away. This place is really easy to find. How come Armand can never find it? Oh, because it's more funny that way. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Once again, the Tabletop Campaign Repository can be found at tcrepo.com, and they're always looking for submissions. Rogue Trader and ship mistress Vera Van Vranken's angular face was bathed in the emerald glow of the hololiths surrounding her command dais. Her dark eyes glared at the complete disaster unfolding before them. Her bony hands worked the physical and gesture controls with speed and precision, though her expression was anything but thoughtful. Her brow furrowed and her lip curled with barely contained rage. Commander Lawden debated saying something. Temperance was one of his duties, after all. It was a duty the shipmistress herself had stressed was of utmost importance. Van Franken was respected for uh, her ability to multitask and to assess complex situations and form successful plans to deal with them. Sometimes, if rarely, her solutions bent towards brashness. Most such situations were usually socially tactical rather than combat strategy related. Still, Van Franken rarely lost her temper, but when she did, it usually resulted in rather expensive repairs to bridge equipment. <laughs> Lawden gathered his courage and murmured into his subvocal vox, Captain, we can salvage this situation. She did not take her darting eyes from the hololiths, and her hands continued to gesture over the controls. This incursion, she said, is nothing less than an indictment of my authority, or lack thereof. That's a bit extreme, don't you think? This time she did stop, and her gaze bore down on him. It had been quite some time since he felt so small. It is not. This incursion, even if we survive, is dangerous to my political standing as a rogue trader. Worse, it's dangerous to my standing among the crew. Captain, you can't believe that the crew, after all these years, would mutiny over this. The shipmistress went back to the hololith. No, at least not yet, but it will impact their effectiveness. If they can't trust their captain to make the right calls, then what hope do they have in a crisis? 
A crew who believes all hope is lost can make truly foolish decisions and doom us all. An amber rune glowed beside one of the messages in Laudan's scrolling tactical feed, and he waved it into the captain's view. She waved it up to the top of her stack. Report, Keln. The bridge was small compared to other frigates. Van Franken's great-great-grandfather had totally redesigned the space to put function over grandiosity. There wasn't even a main oculus. The captain simply kept one of her hololiths tuned to a picked view of the ship's ventral exterior. As such, the space was not only well shielded against conventional attack, but immaterial attacks as well. This particular feature hadn't been so important in recent memory, but the captain had already commented more than once that she was thankful for it today. Unlike other ships, the captain's dais and throne sat in a pit rather than in an elevated position. The bridge crew were stationed in concentric rings around the dais. The lieutenant commanders in the first ring, their subordinates in the next, and so on. Commander Lawden didn't stand in the captain's dais, but instead paced around it and interacted with the bridge crew directly, filtering details to the captain in the center. Some captains might see this bridge layout as less authoritative or even humble. It was nothing of the sort. Shipmistress Van Vranken wanted her crew to see her working fervently while on duty. She wanted to inspire them to do the same, and even shame them when they did not live up to the standards she was setting. What the captain and her predecessors really liked was being able to look each of her officers in the eye when they reported to her. When Auspex Master Lieutenant Commander Keln stood smartly and faced the dais, he met the full force of the captain's authoritative gaze. To his credit, he didn't miss a beat. The crew report that the enemy has avoided the main arterial. Instead, they have traversed the hangar bay, which the captain interrupted, which is far less shielded. Yes, significant, Lieutenant. I have conferred with tactical, and we are taken aback by the next move. When he said this, Van Vranken waved her hand towards the tactical wedge and made eye contact with Lieutenant Commander Akanda Pill, who stood and faced the dais. Colonel Tembo, despite his injuries, has spoken with me on the matter. We believe that we should have expected the enemy to make a play for the bridge or the engineerium already if they were enacting a blitz strategy. It would have been a risky but possible move. The captain didn't say anything, but turned back to Kelm. He said, They have not. They have disappeared from the Auspex, somewhere around the main lift. The Auspexes and the vid feeds in the shafts have been stable. Van Vranken turned to Pill again. How many made it through the hangar? Pill bit her lip. Uh, the squats tell us it was just one of the boarders. A huge warrior in crimson gilded power armor escaped. Probably their commander. Some of the squats tried to pursue, but uh, even their auspexes came up blank. I expect there was a lot of interference and mess down there with the dying warp xenos and stellar radiation. If they truly were alone after the fight in the hangar, they should have continued to take the advantage of the element of surprise. What could they, what could they possibly gain from waiting? We cannot deduce what one warrior... Even one so mighty could hope to prevail against our entire force of arms now that it is mustered. The captain turned and regarded her navigational hololith. Her face was melting from rage into thoughtfulness. In the end, it wasn't her second officer that tempered her, but the work, the job. The other frigate is keeping a respectful distance, even though our shields are out. If this lone warrior were looking for salvation from their ship, they haven't called it in yet. At that moment, Navigator Von Tresberg, followed by her personal guard of five armsmen, strode into the chamber and breathlessly declared, Captain, I believe I have a theory. Yes, said the shipmistress. Reinforcements from the likes of these need not come from another vessel. Not when our void shields in Gellerfield is down. Von Tresberg nodded. We just need to figure out where. There are only two places that might be large enough to summon a force of arms from beyond the veil, said the shipmistress. 
At this declaration, both of the lieutenants started with understandable shock and perhaps a little fear. Commander Lawton knew the shipmistress's pause was an opening for him to intuit her needs. Over the years, he'd gotten better at this. Lieutenant Commander Pill, order the forces staged at the arterial and whatever we can spare from the enginearium to the cargo bays. He turned to Von Tressburg. We'll need you to take command on this one, Navigator. She scoffed. And what if I'm smeared across a bulkhead? Where will you be then? The shipmasters replied, exactly where we are now. We'll see if we can get the colonel stimmed up to assist you, but overall command on the ground will be yours. Get to it, navigator. The lieutenants shuffled uncomfortably as Aunt Von Tressbird stalked out of the bridge, grumbling, followed by her bodyguards. Shipmistress Von Vranken turned back to the hololess and waved to the crew, sending them back to their posts. She turned back to Lawton. Speaking of the colonel, have we had any word from the Rat Lord and his odious little vermin? Last we heard, they were trailing a group uh, making a break for the foredeck. Com- Commander? Lawden couldn't take his gaze from the flickering display of the ship's ventral exterior behind the captain. She turned and watched along with him as the vessel's forward lance battery articulated around to point directly at the command spire. All right. All right. Story time over. We'll take a quick break, come back, and talk about the game. Come here, boy. Get the ball. Aw, <laughs> uh, come on, Max. Get the ball. <laughs> Mom, Max won't get the ball. He's lazy. I think I know why your Zote is being lazy, Jenny. Why, Mom? Because you forgot to feed him his Zotabix today. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, yes. Zotabix contains all the nutrients and random animal parts a growing Zote craves. It not only provides our Zote with the energy it needs to play with you and protect our home, but it also keeps its chitinous shell fresh and shiny. Oh, boy. I'd better feed Max's Zotabix. Yes, you had. Zotabix is made in part from grade A Astra Militarum post-engagement byproduct and is infused with 112 Uh, essential vitamins uh, and minerals harvested from your Zote's natural (laughs) habitat, the finest (laughs) desert vegetables. Zotabix is available in any shopping center on worlds where Zotes are allowed or where the Imperium's inexorable influence has not yet reached. Welcome back. So... Fun. It, it 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 was good to get a game in for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, and we brought our crusade lists as per the use. Yep. Um now last time I really didn't have a lot of updates to my roster. Mm-hmm. Uh because I kind of keep on switching up who comes to the party. So the experience has been kind of sp- split up between units. I think the next game I'm going to have some uh, some upgrades and stuff. Yeah, but definitely. Right now, right now I don't have anybody with more than uh 5 XP. Most most of my highest are like 4 XP. So okay. uh, but I'll, I'll I'll hopefully get some um some upgrades soon. Uh, I did f- mess with my list though because we had a new codex. Yeah, I decided. I decided to totally eliminate the orcs from the list. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Into the power level increased, especially on the Militarum Tempesta Scion squads. I obviously had to update their the their special weapons because you can't take two of the same weapon per five guys anymore. You can only take oh, one. You okay. can take two special weapons, but they have to be two different special weapons. So I had to mess with that. Um. And uh, I also, oh, the uh, c- commander is not a lone HQ anymore. You, what you do is you, you combine, you, he comes as part of the command squad and then you can add the regimental advisors and bodyguards to that unit. Yeah. And if you watch, if you watch my game with Scary, man, you add a Bulgarin to that, an Ogren or Bulgarin to that, and it gets tough. To kill. That Bulgrin yeah. acts as a great bodyguard when there is a medic attached. Um, so uh again, also same deal. My Ogren bodyguard is mm-hmm. not an independent model anymore. 
So it's he just is attached to that. So that that command squad went from like three power level to eight power level. It's a giant squad now. Ooh, so, yeah. yeah. I also wanted like someone to look after the rattlings. So I actually created a you know it was tough because like sometimes I don't want to spend eight power on a single character. Right. Especially for little games like the one we played. So I added a Cadian Castellan to my roster. And this is Lieutenant Commander Ratlord Valk. And <laughs> they are basically, a, they're a character who hangs out in the bowels of the ship. They have a really good, they have a, they have a pretty high rank, but they, it's only so they can gain access to every part of the ship. And they kind of sneak out and they, they stab people. It's great. And they're good friends with the Ratlings. The Ratlings don't mess with them and they don't mess with the Ratlings and they kind of get, they get along uh, and they help each other out. So every time I bring Ratlings, I'm going to have the Rat Lord with, with them. Okay. That works. That's, that's, that is narratively a pretty cool thing to have. Right. Thanks. And, and yeah. you know, don't forget Cadian, just cause it's a quote, Cadian Castellan doesn't mean anything. It means yeah. nothing in the Astro Militarum anymore. You don't have to. They aren't Cadian. They're whatever. Um, what else did I have to do to this? It's it, it's mainly the Scions that that were majorly changed. Uh, I oh I did add a squad of servitors to go with the tech priest. Mm-hmm. I thought that made a lot of sense, and I think I, I like having them, and they can be near the tech priest and and help out with stuff, and help keep the tech priest alive when I have them out. Okay, that's really it. I didn't update any of my um, stratagems, and I think I might have to. I think some of them might not exist anymore. Oh, one of yeah. Them, one of them doesn't. The one where all the Tempestas get fearless. I think I have to change that for something. Yeah. But I'll do that later uh, uh, before our next game, which I hope we can do now. We'll see. We'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. Yeah, your semester's ending, so hopefully we can – yeah. Do it sometime around, around Christmas yeah. time. Anyways, that's it. Um, let's see. That's the changes to my, that's the changes to my roster. Uh, Jason, did you have anything? In yeah. Your changed at all? I pulled the, I was working on my overall roster and I removed the screamers because we are in zone mortalis and they just, it's that doesn't, they don't work. Um, but it gave mm. me a chance to add the changeling and some, and the blue nice. scribes. I love that. Some yeah. more like characters that might be smart enough to do something about it. Right. Um, and I definitely wanted to add the changeling because we are in a ship combat and this could be almost an homage to um, what was it, the Wrath of Magnus uh, that where the changeling is running. Was it in Wrath of Magnus? It's in uh, one of those books that was released around there where the changeling's running to the rock. Uh, that's, mm. you know. So I do have 11 supply points left. So I just have to decide what upgrades are next. Uh, I think I even have, I knocked it down to four requisition points, but I had five at the end of this, uh, at the end of this game. So I have to kind of go and figure out some ways to burn some requisition points. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could select some more stratagems to use maybe. Yeah. I think I'll have to do that. Um, Cause I think that's kind of what's missing. Um, Mm -hmm. I need to go through and double check, um, uh, with, um, what is it with demons? If you select certain characters as warlords, they have an automatic, um, warlord trait. And I need to go through and make sure I pay for those. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I didn't use I didn't use the the trait. In fact, I didn't even take I didn't even take a warlord trait in this game. That'll um, work. At, yeah. That'll eat it up real nice if you put some warlord traits on those new characters. I think that'll yeah. be a good that'll be a good use, and, and it'll give them some uh, some uniqueness and give yeah. them like yeah, I like that. And the nice um, thing is that there's I don't have to even like think about it too hard because <clears throat> um, what is it? I can't remember the name of the traits now. But the changing has its own, and the blue scribes has their own. Like if you choose them, they automatically get that trait, no mm-hmm. matter what. So, nice. yeah. So 
the mission we decided to play. Oh, we decided we were going to do. We were actually going to do that small game mm-hmm. fighting for the uh, Ford Weapons Battery. Yeah, we were going to originally uh, have it as a kill team game, but we decided to do this one instead. Yeah, yeah. This this will be fun. There were, we figured this would be a, a fun, quick little game for us during this these you know tough times. Uh, so. I'm looking for my pictures. Here we go. So what I did was I put four pieces of machinery kind of in the middle of this little battlefield Mm -hmm. in a diamond pattern. Mm -hmm. And I drew a a deployment zone in the center for you. Yeah. And then I drew a triangular deployment zone in each corner for me. And I wrote a number for each one. And you deployed in the middle first as the defender. This will be one of the few times that, like, see, even when you're the overall attacker, kind of like in the planet strike missions, yeah. it is possible for the person who's the overall defender to become the attacker. And yeah. in this case, you had gotten to the weapons battery uh, control center before me. So I'm attacking you. But I'm coming in piecemeal because it's diff- different disparate units coming from different parts of the ship mm-hmm. reacting quickly to this problem. Uh, so I randomly determine which corner each unit was coming from when I, or each, each unit would be deployed in uh, when I deployed them. And uh, when I did that, I ended up with two units in each the s- southeast and southwest and then one unit each in the northeast and the northwest yeah Uh, again we were using blips because that's kind of the standard for our custom zone mortalis rules to to use blind deployment i like i like doing that yeah i do too it's it's always you know kind of a nail-biting thing but it's always interesting yeah well Uh, it's it's always entertaining how about that sometimes yeah and sometimes yeah. whether or not you can actually fit your unit where you've placed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those horrors had been the horrors. There we go. Had been any larger, I, I that would have been tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh for the mission, um, I decided let's do uh holding objectives. If you hold the objective holding the objectives determines whether or not you've seized control of the ship. Uh, the or sorry, the batteries by mm-hmm. the end, and you can perform an action. Either player could have performed an action to sabotage one of the control nodes, yeah, and put it, bring it down. So if three control nodes had been put out of commission, actually the the turret couldn't be used by either of us. Yeah. Um, if you control more than your opponent at the end, then you control the turret. And that would have an effect on the relationship between the two frigates in space, like what mm-hmm. they're doing. Um, th- which means that it, be- it would have behooved you to disable one and hold two, right? Yeah. Um, so, it, uh, you know, if it was going bad for me, I should probably start just disabling them so that yeah. you can't use it either. It, I was hoping for a really interesting dichotomy of like, uh, like who even though it was hold whoever holds the most at the end yeah the, how the how the objectives worked in the in the narrative i was hoping had some uh nuance uh, <laughs> yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah uh so the ter- the, the and again the train we set up i tried to get it as close to i tried to make it look like a an engine ar- like a not an engineerium but like a like a control center mm-hmm. with kind of an op- a room in the middle, a big diamond shaped room in the middle, and then the 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 big four control there. panels. Yeah, four yeah. control panels. Yeah. Uh, okay. So lists. Uh, the attackers list was. Um, I had the rat the uh, rat lord in there, my Castellan. Mm-hmm. Uh, two units of cleaner uh so like i've kind of named each of these squads based on what their special weapons are so the cleaner squad i gave um flamers and pull i think it was was it plasma guns if i recall correctly no grenade launchers flamers and grenade launchers so their their intent is to like 
blast away infantry in their way. And two units of those, two units of ratlings, and then the tech priest and their uh, unit of um, servitors, which I thought would be good for taking those or, or disabling those uh, 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 consoles. What was your list? Uh, I took the Changeling. So this is, that was his first game. I took the Exalted Flamer, which I had never, I've never played before. So it's not their first game as well. Mm-hmm. I took a squad of six Flamers, a squad of three Flamers, and then the squad of Horrors. There we go. <laughs> um, that I that I had basically invaded that room with. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, that was my that's basically my list. Right. And let's see. I don't have any pregame stratagems. Uh my agenda was Fires of Zinch, which is just a tally for Zinch psychic powers, plus one uh for Smite or for which fires carry the tally. And mm-hmm. I only had one psyker in there, so he received that experience boost because he was only nice. one. Yeah, so. and I I took search for Archaeotech, which yeah. is like a uh a uh action on an objective to steal stuff. I figured the ratlings would definitely do that one. Yeah, definitely. For definitely. Sure. It works with the mission. Okay. So uh for deployment. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, it, it it was pretty simple. Like I said, I already told everybody where kind of where my units were in the corner. I had a one long side heavily um uh place and then the other side was very light with some yeah. slowly moving units. And you were just packed in the middle. Yeah, I had what? Uh one, two I had five units. And so I had one unit on, well, I had the hor- horrors in the middle uh, so that they could reinforce an objective if need mm-hmm. be. And then I had the changeling, the two the two squads of flamers and the exalted all each on uh, on an objective just to kind of keep, just to kind of keep an eye on them, you know, like mm-hmm. they're there. I could have gone through and sabotaged them, but I thought, nah, let's see what happens. Right. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I slowly started to wonder at this point, whether or not it might've been a good idea to lock the doors. And I'm wondering if maybe locking the doors would have been a good idea, but I, I don't know. I, I, let's just talk about what happened. So you definitely got, you got, uh, I got to go first. Yeah. Um, and, and, we, I did take my six inch pregame move. Oh yeah, that's right. My, um, regimental doctrines. I took, I, with these guys, I think I'm going to be taking the six inch pregame move. Yeah. Army wide. And then you get, um, and I also took the ignores cover within 18 inches, which doesn't work against you specifically, but in general, I think it's the best choice for the army. It allows you to move. Yeah, the, well, the quit. first one is yeah. the first one is real good. Like, yeah. first one is great. The first one is actually so good for Zone Mortalis that I think it's fine that the second one is totally useless against you. Yeah, um, because the six inch move in the beginning is is pretty sweet in Zone Mortalis. Yeah. So, um, I open I op- I opened the door with the Rat Lord and revealed six flamers holding a control node. <laughs> okay, turn yeah. one. I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't be getting directly into combat right this second. This is not good. Um, <laughs> so on the other side of the control room, a squad of scions opened the door to reveal the exalted flamer. Yep. And all my other units kind of skirted around the outskirts to bide their time. Yeah. Uh, so after a really miserable shooting phase, the crew charge in and Every single one of them dies to Overwatch. Yeah, and that I, I, I rolled really one. well on that too. Yeah, that yeah. was nasty. So ten, all right, ten crew gone. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, the Scions charge the Exalted Flamer, 
holding one of the control nodes, uh, which also reveals the changeling on the other side. And then the voidsmen communicate with their commander and they're like, hey, do you want us to like? And the commander's like, yes, go. And so they (laughs) charge around the corner at the flamers, uh, revealing the pink whores who are holding the center of the room. Yeah. Uh, and he and you just decided. All right, and I also have my flamers here. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with. Uh, I'm done with tokens right now. This room is pretty full. much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lieutenant Commander also charges, and the Voidsmen versus the Flamers. Uh, I I have eleven attacks hitting on fours. I get one hit. Oh, that's right. I forgot Even about with that. a Castell in there. Yeah. Uh, the Flamers spend two CP to break in and. They put two wounds on the Castellan and four scions die. Yeah. Just, just, I have two models left over there. Uh, what did I, I, I lost 10, 14, 14 models in my own turn. Yeah. That was, that great. was rough. That was rough. That wasn't great. Uh, yeah. So the, even the Rat Lord couldn't kill anybody. Uh, the Voidsmen on the other side um, get four wounds on the Exalted Flamer. Uh, it saves two of them, but somehow it, it kills a Scion. Yeah, that was so weird because yeah. that guy kept rolling sixes. He did. He it's did. Just, I kept thinking, ah, he's dead now. Nope. No, your combat save isn't great on these, but Uh you're still getting it. In the last game, I was actually putting some wounds on with these Scions, but it was not happening this game. It just was not. Not at all. Uh Uh-huh. The Voidsman Sergeant who lost four of his men actually did pass morale for some reason. Yeah. it, it 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 was a bad first turn. The writing was already on the wall. This was a bloodbath. Yeah. And the bloodbath just continued, Jason. What happened on your turn? Okay, so I'm still learning all the warp storm stuff. So I went through ahead and I went ahead and ran rolled my uh warp storm effects and I got five warp storm points, which I then used to heal all damage dealt to all if, all damage. Yeah. Every all the unit. damage I dealt. All the damage I dealt was then negated. Yeah, every little bit of it. Yeah, I just remember looking at it going, oh, this is this is this is this is rough. Um, <laughs> and so I went ahead and stayed. Um, I kept the horrors, and I think one of the flamers. I just left them where they were near objectives, just mm-hmm. in case something got through. Well, uh, and at this point, like, what would they do, right? Like, why right. press the advantage? Why leave the objectives open to attack from somewhere else when yeah. you're on such a... You basically have twice the points I do at this point, if not more. Yeah. Why bother? Uh, the changeling then goes through one of the doors so it can see the Rat Lord and the voids, Voidsman Sergeant in combat. Um, and I went ahead and smited the Voidsman Sergeant just so Rude. we could... Yeah. <laughs> so there's my changeling getting his first witch fire no his first smite not the first mm-hmm. uh, and then the rat lord i think died yeah, to he went down fighting with the uh flamer. yeah he died there uh your voidsman oh. did put two more wounds on my exalted flamer but those voidsmen fell to the exalted flamer um mm-hmm. and um. yeah it just kind of big it really just gets worse because morale fails for the voidsman because of demonic terror. Yeah, I was passing it, and then you're like, "Oh wait, but there's more." Yeah, minus one leadership. I'm like, ah. Yeah, so those guys all like left, um, and I didn't. I wasn't really reading our. I wasn't paying attention to our notes as well as I could have been or should have been. Uh-huh. But you wrote at this point, the noble crew, of the Hubris of Saint Uther, only have rattlings and the tech priest alive. <laughs> literally what i had left yeah and i've got two <laughs> wounds on an exalted flamer um, this is oh, turn yeah. one we have not yeah, gotten out of turn one, one yet the warp storm effect for for turn two was primeval terror yeah so uh while i'm in the aura it's an additional minus one leadership yeah for minus two yeah and you take the first turn of of battle round two yeah, and I was looking at it, and I know that I killed everything off, and I just decided to regroup and 
you know, move back to the objectives. We're basically starting where we were. Um, yeah. And that's what I did because I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't even see where your, your markers were. I realized that at times with um, tabletop, I get kind of blind to stuff, mm-hmm. but you know, I was just like, okay, I, I actually thought you had more stuff in reserve, to be honest. <laughs> it felt like that, didn't it? Yeah, I was like, man, he's going to hop out with something else and he's just going to wreck me. And that's all I could think of the entire time. So I was just like, I did not realize that. Mm. Um, I did not realize where we were with the numbers. So, I, feel, I yeah. think if I had been a little smarter with the uh, with the um, crew, if I had charged around the corner instead of so you yeah see me i think they would have done a lot more damage in combat and i think it would have been a, a lot closer but yeah the rattlings then opened the door so they could shoot the exalted flamer uh, yeah. in the room across the hall the tech priest and the servitors did the same and the tech priest said okay i'm gonna start sabotaging this machinery because this is obviously not going in our favor yeah um Blip number two, which is obviously the uh, the second unit of Rattlings. I actually had them kind of skirt around looking for the possibility of getting to the objective on the other side of the battlefield to loot it for mm-hmm. their agenda. They were they were under they were never going to ever like actually stay and fight. In fact, I kind of regret not doing that with the Rattlings who were fighting uh, against the um, exalted flamer. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would have loved them to, to look at the, at the tech priest and say, yeah, we're also performing an action on this objective, but for different reasons, jerk, uh. <laughs> we're stealing this stuff. <laughs> um, Looting so around the, the world. Servitors, servitors actually fail to wound with their multi melts against the exalted flamer. Uh, but the Rattlings decide yeah. to charge and kill the Exalted Flamer in combat, which was just a delight. <laughs> you rolled three fives and two sixes, and they just they tore. They were just upset, right? Yeah. They're like, we don't want to get we don't want to get bathed in flames. Let's stab this guy, and they did. Good for them. <laughs> and the tech priest failed to sabotage the weapon battery. Like a jack wagon. Yeah, that was yeah, that was rough. Yeah, that and then was you rough. killed your guys again because you're a boot bureau duty head. Yeah, I was actually really shocked about that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it was kind of all over, but the crying, all the servitors died to Overwatch because I didn't realize how not tough they are. I never actually looked at their stats. Um, and the tough uh, sneaks get murdered let me tell you uh flamers are not to be trifled with in overwatch they are real good yeah flamers real good real good flamers real good yeah the game is over at this point uh the one unit of rattling survives i feel like they should have gotten um <laughs> march the, for greatness uh, mark for greatness because they didn't bother to engage in combat in this bloodbath which makes them way smarter than everybody else they could have i would have taken that yep but yeah. uh you picked the jeffrey sneaks uh who they did take out that exalted flamer. flamer good for them right yeah and uh they also uh were the ones who helped nail down the fact that we managed to disable at least just just one of the uh consoles I what did I pick for you? I picked that giant unit of flamers because yeah. they basically landed you the win. Yeah, and I think that actually moved them to the next rank. Nice, so nice. They had, I've had who's ranked? Who's ranked now? Um, my sorcerer, because of course, and this one group of flamers. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's so, awesome, dude. So next time for the next game we're going to be doing a warp ritual that might be uh kind of a regular 40 K game. Yeah. Because it's going to be a big space. Oh yeah, definitely. So we probably won't use the zone mortalis rules for that. Mm-hmm. We'll probably just call it a regular 40 K game and we might just use the, ri- I- I'll check the, uh, uh, what is it? The, uh, wars of faith book. Okay. For a cool ritual based 
narrative mission for us to use. Or you could check your, I think you have that book too. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember where it is. Up. But it, well, you're, you're in a room full of boxes right now, so yeah. I won't expect you to figure that one out. Um, yeah. I, um, I know where the Rift War book is. Hmm. I see it. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, so I figured, uh, it will be another one where you're going to be playing as the defender though, okay? because you're already there performing a ritual and it, it probably took the navigator a little while to actually hunt down specifically where you are in mm -hmm. the cargo bays. So we'll do that. I'll set up a sweet board. That's just full of cargo containers and we'll, we'll have okay. a great time summoning demons. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, summary. Yeah. Flamers might be a little OP. Yes. Um, there was that it, I see's Discord comment, which came from GW about Zinch having a seventy percent rate win rate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you're gonna go good. mess with flamers, you're gonna man. Yeah, you're gonna get the you're gonna get the burn. Yeah, kind of like you, you mess with the bull, you get the horn, right? What's funny is um, you have yourself to blame. I think at the beginning of Eighth Edition. No, not eighth edition, but the beginning of ninth, I managed to get a whole bunch of flamers um, from from one of my friends that I haven't painted, but I've got like a ton of flamers that need to be painted. They're like some were metal. I think a few are resin, might be resin. I don't remember. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, I could actually run this list if I could remember where those models are. Yay. <laughs> So this game, yeah. this next game probably won't be, uh, there's no, I don't think there's any way we can get it in for the early January. I think we're just going to have a regular episode in yeah. early January. Um, but we'll, let's try to get it in before you go back to school though. Definitely. So, definitely. Um, but we may have to do like the story time and the episode recording a shortly, you know, after, mm -hmm. uh, just because the holidays can be weird. And I, th you go to, you go to, um, Oklahoma state for Christmas. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, there's that whole thing, but we're, we'll try to get it in. Okay. All right, let's take it. Let's take a break and we'll come back and we'll close out the show and talk about it next time. Hey, Archons, does Ninth Edition have you feeling like the Slith Party bus just doesn't have enough party for you? Well, if you want to put a little shock back into your shock brow, you need the Slith Party On! That's right, Archons, for 736 points, you can take three Archons, 12 Slith, and a Tantalus. It's the Slith Party On! Now, I know what you're thinking. Couldn't I take Drazar? 15 Incubi and a Tantalus, a.k.a. the Incubi Murder Boat, for 51 less points? Sure you could, but it wouldn't be the Slith Party On! But is it legal? Oh yeah! Is it awesome? Oh yeah! Is it any good on the table? F*** no! It's the all-new Slith Party On. Sort of awesome! Party On! Really hilarious! Party On! It's the Slip Party On! Oh, we've reached level six. Welcome back. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, it was nice to talk to you again, Jason, as usual. Yep. Um, so... Next episode is going to be our annual shit show or not annual. Well, it's kind of annual. Yeah. Kind of. Semi, semi, well, I don't know what semi annual means. Uh, is, well, we is, have big is, things is, like 150 and one and 200 and 200. Yeah. So the episode 200, we're going to ask friends to be on it. Uh, we'll see if anybody, if we'll, we'll kind of figure, we're going to try to figure it out what the best kind of discussion will be, but we'll, we'll definitely play the Titanicus game and mm -hmm. we might be drunk before we even start up the episode, recording the episode, which will be fun. Uh, <laughs> so there'll be that and it'll be, it'll have an explicit rating and we might talk about boobs. Yeah, probably. Okay. So until then play the game the way you want to with boobs. <laughs> Thank you.
We'd love it if you could give us a positive rating and review on iTunes. If you'd like to keep in contact with us, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter by searching for Masters of the Forge. And you can follow our hobby progress on Instagram with the hashtag Masters of the Forge. If you'd like to engage with us directly, you can always join our Discord server. To do so, or if you have any questions, topic suggestions, or if you'd like to advertise your creative hobby endeavor, contact us at mastersoftheforge at gmail.com. Please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Masters of the Forge. Thanks. Thanks. The music used in this podcast was made by Podot of the duo Sublevel 3. The track is used with his permission. This podcast is protected by the Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives Non-Commercial International License. More information about this license and contact information if you have any requests can be found at our blog, mastersoftheforge.com. It's such a good feeling to play games your way. It's such a happy feeling, 40 k away. And when you throw dice with story in mind, it's such a one. Wonderful way to unwind It's a good feeling A very good feeling The feeling you know That we'll be back When the fortnight's new And we'll have new ideas for you And you'll have things You'll want to talk about We will too